Hey, are you enjoying this show here on the Sorgatron Media Network? Uh, straight from Pittsburgh, PA. Did you know there's a bunch of other videos coming from Pittsburgh and there's one source where you can find everything Pittsburgh based so you can represent the Steel City and see people who do represent the Steel City. Go to our friends over at pittsburghonvideo.org, a big aggregator of these, this great stuff coming from the Steel City on video to you wherever you are around the world. That's pittsburghonvideo.org. Go check it out. Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we talked to Will Rutherford. He's back from the wilderness and what did he discover about himself and technology? Jim Loke is in and we talk about what's going on, changes in terrestrial television, and is your Xbox watching you? All this and more, Awesome Cast. Guys, it's the awesome cast 151. We're back again, Mike Sorg. I'm not Chachi. I'm I'm Michael Sorg. There we are uh, on the video uh, from the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to uh, geek out. Ready to talk tech. Ready to see how some got in touch with tape, uh, nature over the past weekend. <laughs> uh, joining me as usual on the couch. He's in the middle of a big project. Right there is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com at Chachi says on the Twitter. He's looking hey, for his hardest. Yes. He's 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 embraced a uh, a cornerstone of geekdom in watching Doctor Who over the last week. Uh, that two weeks. The last two weeks. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, the tenth Doctor is a bitch. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I said it. You can email all of your hate comments to uh, awesomecast or what's it? Contact at awesomecast dot com. There you go. There you and go. Uh, let me know how terribly terribly wrong I am. Or, or it's saying that uh, the tenth Doctor is probably the worst. Yeah, you'll probably get some in the chat room here in a little bit too. That's fine. Um, also joining us uh, back from the wilderness, we'll get into that. Is uh, Will Rutherford of ThoughtfulRiot.com at DJ Lunchbox Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. How you doing, sir? Uh, excellent. I'm. Uh, it's everything you just said was completely true. I am back from the wilderness. I do do things on all of those websites, and we will get into it later. Excellent, excellent. And also, back on the show from Boston, Massachusetts, live from his iPad, is yeah, Jim Loke. How you doing, sir? I'm well, thank you. And uh, Will, does he not look like more rested than you've ever seen him in your life? He is. He's smiling and not like through his teeth like usual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not gritted teeth. I haven't popped a molar for a month. Um, <laughs> Kudos. A month. That's not right. Excellent. Um, of course, like, oh, there's Chachi. Chachi we can't know what Chachi's working on here in a second. But um, but if you want to get geeky with us, so you want to follow through any conversations, we tweet uh, stories we're interested in through the week and everything on uh, at AwesomeCast. Said that backwards. Uh, on Twitter, uh, you can also send us our, your comments, anything you want us to talk about over at contact at AwesomeCast.com. Hit us on, up on uh, Google+, Plus, on Facebook. We have a lot of conversing going on there. Uh, so let's get started with our awesome thing of the week. And Chachi, I think, found his awesome thing of the week like right before we started here. What are you working on? Oh, uh, well, uh, before uh, we took a break from uh, getting all this new stuff to work, um, and... Uh, Sword uh, showed me this pile of stuff that he was going to donate. Or yeah, you can actually see it in the shot, right behind that Taz's gym picture. Uh, yeah, the other side. Over here. That, that, that's full of uh, uh, video cards and cords and stuff. Right and I mean, I, I probably have enough parts to build about five computers back there, but are they worth anything is the question. Um, and he was like, oh, you can go through it. If you see anything, take it. If not, leave it. And I, I found this hard drive. Um, what is really it? I don't even know. I didn't bother. Is, it, is that where the caviar? Yeah, drives? caviar uh, twenty two five hundred. Twenty two five hundred. Um, Wait, what is that? Megabytes? Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> twenty five hundred megabytes. Yeah, two point five gigabytes. So uh, be just I, I, I wanted to see what was on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> What's that, Josh? I, I wanted to see what was saved on it, so I'm taking it apart to take a look. I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think that's gonna work on so many levels. So. <laughs> So your little bit of entertainment. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll be working on taking this apart. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Um, I had um, it, it's kind of probably sounds lame right off the bat. Oh, I got that thing again. Um, but my my awesome thing of the week is I, I 
I, I kind of uh, got into the hype for the party pod this weekend, Chach. Everyone you, you, does. You, you got it. You got me into it. Uh, you, the party pod is amazing. So, so we were doing a trip. You know, we did our road trip up to uh, Western New York to visit the folks, and uh, and and, I, and Missy was driving. And I was like, you know what? Let's let's do the party pod, right? So I, I we went. I went and grabbed iHeartRadio, and that's. I, I, you know, Chach, I've been kind of a curmudgeon when it comes to like terrestrial radio and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and uh, it was kind of cool to be able to, to to pop that thing up there and, and and be able to listen to, you know, Mikey and Bob clips instead of commercials for one thing. I'm, uh, is one of the benefits of using. That. I'm telling Mikey and Bob this that way during softball they can just aim all of their line drives for you. Why? <laughs> that way I don't get them. Okay. Okay. Why are you telling him this? What? What do you mean? What are you telling him? That you don't like their show. No, no. I like their show, and that's yeah, the reason that's I probably listen to any radio. No, that's not what you said. You said you don't like. You don't. You're a curmudgeon for radio. I am. I am a curmudgeon for radio. But this is kind of like uh, it was. I, I liked it. It, it was a. Uh, I liked the the interface on there. I like that you could. I like there's a thumbs up and thumbs down, and they'll send it to the DJ. It says we'll see if that ever, ever happens. Um, but uh, but it's it's pretty cool interface, and 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 I know a lot of people listen to. Uh, like, you know, AJ, you know, has been on the show. He's down in, like, Carolina, and he listens to the show from there and everything. So I kind of like this idea that, like, like you know, radio is not just FM, you know. And plus it sounds better on my radio over my iPod than it does over FM. And I, I don't know if anybody else knows this with audio because it always seems like the bass. Like, I'll listen to stuff that I know I have on my iPod, like Thrift Shop, and it's always like everything's pushed up to the, to the ceiling. Um, do, do, do any of you guys have that kind of problem? With radio, do you even listen to radio anymore? I, I really don't much anymore. I mean, I have such a short drive to work. Mm -hmm. um, but I also just ditched XM after a number of years, mm -hmm. so I'm more or less going off of Spotify. I, I, I'm such a latecomer to Spotify. Um, iHeartRadio, it is. You're right. It is a fantastic app. There's also TuneIn, which yeah. is an app that I know CBS has uh, tried to pull off it for a while, and they realized it just wasn't a smart idea to pull off it. And I love it because when I was doing radio, I was able to record my shows and, and I had them to play back, you know, as they were ready. So, um, no, I think I think terrestrial radio they, they have they have to they have to evolve, and this is the way they're doing it. I've used uh, TuneIn before. That's been nice because a lot of times uh, my nephew uh, he does high school wrestling, and a lot of his met meets will be on the weird AM local FM whatever channel, and they're on the TuneIn app. Right. So that's kind of cool. Um, so it's kind of nice that we have these options that, that we, and, and, and I like, like that, I like that idea that like, it's just, we've decentralized these regional stations too. You know, I, if people like, you know, how many people, you know, dig like Mikey and Big Bob, you know, their show and they moved away or discovered them otherwise. Now I don't have to worry about, you know, I'm not in a market for, you know, back in the day, if you weren't in a market for Howard Stern, you didn't get to hear Howard Stern. Right, you know. Now it's down to the point where I like the morning guy in this like third-rate city. Now I can take him with me wherever I just got outsourced for a job or I'm on a trip or something. I hear Chachi clicking away at that hard drive over there. What do I do? <laughs> we, I we can hear, we can hear the the like the dings and whatever you're doing to that hard drive. <laughs> I should accessing the data. Okay, all right. So uh, what about you, Jim? What do you what do you got for an awesome thing of the week? Well, today it's starting up here in Boston, and it's going to make its way to the Pittsburgh area later this year. And it's good news for people like you. I know you cut the cord. I know you get, you ditched cable a while back. But Aereo um, is launching, and while the networks, including uh, you know my employers, and, and, and they're not too happy about it, uh, the fact remains you are going to be able to get over-the-air television on many of your devices, on your iPad, on your on your Apple TV, on your Roku. Uh, yeah, it's it's launching today. It's about 8 bucks a month. The first month is free. It really is. The concept uh, is is pretty spectacular. We'll see if it survives the legal challenges that it's going to that it continues to face. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think it's I think it's a great idea, and it kind of goes it dovetails with you mentioning Apple TV and 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 and, uh, and tune in. So I think this is something that we're going to see a lot more um, a lot more people try out. In fact, a buddy of mine got in on the trial that was running the last couple of weeks. But today's the day it's gone widespread in Boston. So we'll see how it works out. But I think that in a city where the cost of living is already very high and people are looking for ways to save as much money as they can, this is a, a, a very 
logical uh, step for a lot of people. And, yeah, and I think it's interesting because, like, I know for 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 me, like, I don't see, I get most of the channels, but I don't get like like the ABC uh, affiliate for some reason. Uh, uh, well, and, I, and I'll tell you what, I, I it's funny you say that because. I remember growing up, and, and you're, you're, you're speaking of Pittsburgh, correct? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just here okay. in the South Hills in Beachview. Yeah, well, I remember growing up, and we, we had a TV that did not get um, did not get the ABC station at all because I think their antenna was in Elizabeth, but that was before the digital transition, which obviously if you're in an area where there's reduced reception, um, digital TV is great, but it doesn't really do you that, that much good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get less leeway. Like I remember, I remember growing up. Like we had the three channels, and like I got most of them out of Youngstown. I got maybe a couple out of Cleveland. We never got the Pittsburgh ones for some reason, uh, even though like all the cable systems carried the the, uh, the Pittsburgh stations. I think um, w- w- if you had cable, and I remember like you know that whole like well I can get this one channel on the small TV back in the laundry room, <laughs> and it's in black and white. You know. Uh, yeah. it, it, that was the experience. Um, but I like this idea that, you know, okay, maybe I don't have to go get an antenna and deal with all that thing. And the fact that the, the service, like, has, like, a DVR thing, and you're yeah. not getting, like, you're just getting the regular stations, you know? It, right. It, this isn't, like, getting, like, USA or Spike TV or, or ESPN. This is getting NBC, you know? Yeah. So, and, and which, and, and, and I'm continually amazed at how much stuff I get. Just by putting an antenna up. The fact that I got like Ion and I can actually watch wrestling on on Wednesday night without going through anything, you know, uh, and 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 like those off channels, I can still watch like He Man and Shira at two in the morning, you know. <laughs> I mean that that's still like that's, that's still amazing to me that like we have those options. Um, but but it'd be great for this for for people that are like uh, apartment buildings. I mean you know, you're, you're a little bit urban, more urban there probably in Boston. Like a lot of people living in town. I know yeah. this is this is why this thing came up in New York City because nobody can put up an antenna. They're on the wrong side of the apartment building. Good luck, right? Right, right. And it's going to be. I, I think it's going to be. Again, if it sustains all the legal challenges, it's going to be a game changer. But I, I did the same thing actually for a while in my apartments. Um, I, I have a, an apartment where landlord pays for everything, and I had basic. I, had, I shouldn't say basic cable, but I had probably extended basic cable. Uh, Comcast said you got to have a box, um, and all of a sudden I was cut off, and for about four months. My landlord, for one reason or another, didn't really Sorry. get moving too much. So I went out, I bought an antenna, I hooked it up to a TiVo, and it was great. I was recording off the air for a while, and I just got back on digital cable fairly recently, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I, I could do without this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely, like, like you know, Hulu Plus is nice for what it is, but then you don't get, like, How I Met Your Mother. I'm not caught up on it because it's not in there, right? It, this way, you, you get everything that's out there. You know, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's also interesting because there's a lot of you're seeing. Um, I think they're actually doing it in your area. Uh, I think Philadelphia as well. I think like the ABC uh, affiliates are doing like a localized, like will stream through your app. It's, it's funny you, you say that, but you have to have the cable subscription in order to see the broadcast stuff. Right, right. It's called uh, Watch ABC. In fact, they did the upfronts a couple of weeks ago, and. Um, I have it. I have it right here. Uh, uh-huh. we, it is not active in this market yet, but the Watch ABC app, and I know it obviously doesn't show up too well here on on, on the iPad. But uh, yeah, you're right. That's it's 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 part of the way that you know. About ten years ago, for the longest time, if you owned a TV station, the network was paying you for the right to put their programs on your air. Yeah. And then about ten years ago, that switched, and now the dynamics changed. Now all the cable companies are going after the cable, or the TV co- TV companies are going after the cable providers and saying, "Hey, you have to pay us if you're paying ESPN five, you know, five or six dollars of your subscription of your cable subscription goes to ESPN alone." Yeah. So, so that's I mean, it's it's the whole dynamic is changing. So that's one of the reasons. So I, I agree with you. I think that as as somebody who does not have, you know, if you don't have a cable subscription. Yeah, it's 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 not ideal, but for you know for us, um, for us on the TV end, it's it's great because you know you go back and, and I'm sure you know if we have time we'll talk about it later. But you know during the Boston bombing and everything that, that was associated with that, at one point our website our, for for my employer was I think the number was somewhere in in, in the in the ninety thousand range of, of of streams we had going around Jeez. the same time. So I think around that time. We always knew that it was a valuable thing to be able to stream our live signal 
when it was necessary, but now we're obviously seeing that this is something that people want to uh, want to see on a, on, on a regular basis. Yeah, and, and you don't get to see that too often because I think I think people forget that like you know the whole public service side of especially a local affiliate like you work for, you know yeah. that it is an informational. Right. You are the emergency channel in, in that case, as you guys were for 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 the bombing up there. Yeah, yeah. So I think that, uh, and that's the thing about the app is, and, and you mentioned this is. It's not just going to be, you know, hey, you can stream these programs. I mean, the, the goal is to make it the live signal all the time. So if we're seeing a commercial here, you're going to see a commercial on there. So, uh, yeah, you're right. Philadelphia and New York rolled out now. And then the Hearst Corporation, which owns a number of TV stations, uh, which may or may not include the one that I work for, and which does certainly include WTAE back in Pittsburgh, they are the first ABC station group to sign on. So, so they, they will, um, they'll adopt that later this year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch all this as everybody's kind of all kind of pushing against each other and these different ideas on how their content should be getting out there uh, and how what rights you have to see it, I guess, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think and I think definitely from a consumer side, we see, well, it's free. It's over the air. Why should I be paying for it? You know, and, and, and kind of like these things that kind of bridge that gap mm-hmm. seem like a good thing. Or at least it, it makes us it makes us uh, ask the right questions, you know. Yeah. So, because uh, I think this is something that definitely has a lot of old rules that need to be reevaluated. So, uh, so it's great to see Aereo, and I really hope something like Aereo survives something like this. So, uh, so let's go to the man who is back from the jungle. Will, what, what is your awesome thing of the week? Uh, my awesome thing of the week is books. <laughs> Uh, I was, uh, <laughs> after, after being away for so long, I, uh, I gained, uh, a reappreciate, reappreciation. I don't know if that's a word, a new appreciation for books. Um, okay. there was, there was, I, I took a, just a huge stack of fucking, oh, I'm, I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Different show. <laughs> just a big old stack of books and comic books. Um, and I read and read and read. And one of the things I, I, brought was a, a very thick tome of Sherlock Holmes stories. It's all the Sherlock Holmes stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, my girlfriend was interested, so I actually read uh, at least one, I think one, maybe one and a half uh, of the, the very long Sherlock Holmes stories to her. And it was great. It was wonderful. Go to your library. Get a book. Read a book. <laughs> it's amazing. Awesome. Well, I, like, I want to get into this a little bit more then. Uh, what what tell tell us about your experience? Yeah, we had you on a couple of weeks ago. You were talking about how you were going to detach from technology here, uh, uh, kind of uh, you know, kind of cleanse, I guess, from all the Twitter streams and everything that you you're, you're very involved with on your day to day basis. Uh, remind remind everybody what what you did. How how, how long were you disconnected? And uh, you know, let us kind of know how it went. Um, well, I think cleanse is a bad word. Cleanse has implies that there's negative connotations to True. The social True. media that we all love so dear. Um, but basically the idea was that uh, me and my girlfriend would go on a vacation, a much needed vacation, and we would take no technology with us, or at least not a lot. Um, no cell phones, no iPhones, no computers, um, no iPads, none of that. We, had, we didn't even use a GPS. We used paper maps, which was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, surprisingly awesome. We had a bunch of paper maps um, that we got from AAA. Never got lost once. Did all kinds of, um, like, why don't we go over here and, and check out this alternate route and drive through Shenandoah National Park, which was amazing. Um, and we, we traded off a lot while driving, and uh, I got to say, I didn't really miss my phone while we were driving um, because I was looking at a national park. It was incredible. Um, <laughs> mountains. We drove over mountains. Um, but the first night, we went camping, and then uh, the next two uh, – yeah, that's right. The first night, we went camping. The next two nights, we went um, – stayed at a bed and breakfast and uh the camping wasn't too bad because when i go camping i don't bring technology anyway it's generally just books and notebooks uh and then when i got to the bed and breakfast there was all the stuff to look at and you know all this stuff going on so i didn't miss it as much as um i thought i would and i thought i would miss it a hell of a lot what oddly enough and this this was really more me learning something about myself was I missed it in the really quiet moments 
where I was by myself. Like uh, when I would take a shower and then, you know, dry off, go into the bedroom. When I do that Make here it. at home, I always have a podcast or an audiobook playing or something. Mm-hmm. I've always got that noise going. From the second I get home, generally, I turn on some kind of music or podcast or something, some kind of noise. That wasn't even an option where we were. And at first, it was a little uncomfortable, but after a while, I grew to really enjoy it. Awesome. Um, yeah. So. So so I mean, the, the, when you, you when you came back to it, and uh, are you are you back to your old ways, like a day in here? Are you, you just settled right back into it, or are you kind of reevaluating kind of how uh, you do your day to day technology? Um, I'd like to say both. Okay. Um, I've noticed that right away I'm playing a lot less games on my iPhone. I check it less. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, I, I have been listening to podcasts at work just like I do cause it's work. Um, and, uh, one of the big revelations with, uh, with this whole thing was that I discovered that I'm not the way I use social media and most of my technology, I don't use it as a tool. I use it as a luxury. Okay. And giving up a luxury was so much easier than giving up a tool. You know what I mean? Okay. And um, it made me realize that moving forward, I need to look as look at social media as more of a tool than as a luxury. I mean, certainly it's a luxury. I've got games. I've got you know news at my fingertips. I've got great time wasters. You know what I mean? But I need to. It's it's a great resource that I realized I'm not utilizing. Interesting. So 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 you're you're, you're looking at using it more for uh, less for play then. Yeah, I think so. Okay. It, and if not if not less for play, then an equal amount, but also more. Like I mean, I've got I've got blogs and Twitter and YouTube and all of this stuff that I just kind of like I fiddle with every now and then, mainly when I'm bored. Hmm. I need to make a transition to not just when I'm bored and make it something that I can really use to to I, I hate this phrase, but I'm going to use it because I can't think of anything better. Build a personal brand. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, so you're like I, I know like like for me like I I. I I, I think of uh, Twitter as like kind of my brain dump, you know, mm-hmm. like, like I, I'm not really kind of strat, strategizing like what I'm doing, at least with my personal Twitter, other than like actively deciding to talk about what I'm working on, you know, and that's like, mm-hmm. that's kind of like my proactive, this is my brand thing. I was like, Hey, here's what I'm doing over here kind of thing. Uh, so I'm hopefully become known for doing those things and hopefully that gets me wor- more work and that seems to work out pretty well um but other than that there's no strategy there's there's bsing with you there's bsing with chachi uh there's just reacting to other things i see i, I, I don't reach out enough it seems it feels like mm-hmm. on there it's just kind of there you know so um and, and i know yeah this- part of the good uh, part of the conclusion I came to with Twitter, um, and this uh, seeds of this were planted during the discussion I had with you right before I left, and that's um, like I look at I look at stand up comedians and and funny people and and you know actors and people on there that I admire, and they 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 don't just use Twitter to dick around, mm-hmm. you know they they use it um, they use it as a tool, and so I realize I can't. I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll go days just retweeting people and not posting anything original. Whereas you look at somebody like, um, uh, I think your name's at curly comedy, who's hilarious based out of New York. And at, you, you look at Rob Delaney, Rob Delaney is a Twitter workhorse and every single tweet almost without fail is absolutely hilarious. He works at Twitter. So the conclusion I came to is if I want to, if, if I want to grow, uh, as a as a known quantity, I have to. That's a public face. Twitter is a public face for me, just like YouTube, just like my blog, just like the podcasts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just it, it's not just leisure time. You know what I mean? If I, I want it to be something, I have to make it into something. And I think that's an interesting distinction with Twitter. Is like some people are just on there to dick around, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but you know those people are just you know just kind of doing beside their job 
Um, whereas, you know, somebody, you know, you know, you know, Jim, I know you use it a lot for your, for your job. Mm -hmm. So you, you probably can lend more toward that. Like, this is kind of my identity professionally. Yeah, it's 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 kind of tough. I mean, I I I I, want, I think after the marathon tweeting I did after everything that happened here in Boston, um, it got to the point where I, I mean I, I added within a matter of days between my at loke account and then my at loke WCBB account, which is my which is what I primarily tweet for work. Um, I added somewhere around twenty five hundred new new users oh, in geez. a matter of a couple of days. And, you know, I've started to see the drop off since then. But in the aftermath, I sort of I, 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 I sat back and I said, OK, what's what's my purpose here? Uh, because there's all these new eyes. There's a lot of people who are unfamiliar with 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 Boston, with who I am, with who, who I work for. But they're following me. So do I try to try to find a niche and, and, and focus my energies on on, on, on on being a little more broader or do I um, or, or, or do I go back to doing what I did before? So I'd probably say on both accounts, uh, low K WCVB, not so much. I mean, because I covered so much, so many ancillary stories of the bombing that what I was putting out was still relevant. But on the low K account, I, I think if you look at the timeline, you know, I, I sort of tapered off my tweets quite a bit. And I think in the last couple of weeks, I, I sort of, I, I sort of felt like I wanted to step it up because I needed, as what you said, Mike, a, a, a quote unquote brain dump. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I, you know, I think that it's a little tougher for me to do that. I, I think, I mean, Will, all the credit in the world to you. And I think that that's, I mean, it's really food for thought um, to do something along those lines. But but for, for me, I don't know. I, it, at some point, I really have to sit back and think, you know, um, I, I don't think you could sustain the pace of, of, of tweeting everything forever. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see. I know I know the one thing, too, is the next couple of weeks, it's going to be tough for me on, on Twitter, especially. I've, I've, I've really had to carve out my two identities because, you know, with the Penguins taking on the Bruins. <laughs> so so I'm getting all these tweets on my work account, people saying, oh, yeah, dude, dude, you, you, you guys are going down, dude. And um, and, and so I, I've been tweeting back and I've been saying, you know what, I'm playing it neutral. But that guy, Loke, he's a huge Penguins fan. <laughs> I, I did see your uh I, yeah i did see your instagram uh with the uh bring it on pittsburgh in the background oh god yeah and, and the thing is everybody at work knows because i am i mean honestly i talk i i talk about pittsburgh at work more than i should sometimes and, and, and i realize that but um but i think people are taking just a little bit of, a little bit of too much pleasure in seeing me like really torn here because see, see i'm one of the few news guys at my station who knows sports you know i don't know everything about sports but i can i can sit here and talk to you about the penguins i can sit here and talk to you about the state of the nhl i can talk to you about baseball so they sort of see me as okay if, if it's a, if it's you know if they want to if they need to stick somebody outside the garden in the morning they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna put me out there <laughs> so and, and and by the way this is not the first test i'm gonna have because november 3rd the patriots play the steelers here wow <laughs> <laughs> So I'm either going to become the most uh, the most straightforward, uh, unbiased news reporter, or I'm going to become hated and reviled here in Boston. Well, if they were smart, they would uh, they would make you uh, take some kind of bet where you know if the Steelers lose, you have to appear on air with a, a Patriots jersey on. Oh God, no, no, I couldn't do that. <laughs> do you, Do you really want to give them ideas? Well, I, I'm no, just. Well, it would actually work to increase viewership. Yeah. Or it, to to have one of those moments for the year in news. Or or, 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 or make him the most hated anchor on, <laughs> <laughs> depending on how it flew. It really comes down to this, though. Seriously. I, I, I mean, I and I knew this from when I was working with KDK, and, I, and I've said this a couple times over the last, the last few weeks, is I hated, honestly, the way that the stations, the way that, you know, my employer – was just nonstop, you know, the Steelers win a game. It's like you put somebody outside an empty stadium the next morning. You have the anchors dressing in black and gold. You have the anchors hosting pep rallies. And, and I, I never bought into that. Um, I, I, I never really was a fan of being like the, the, the homerism of, of local news. So, honestly, my goal is on TV. Yeah, people at work know where I'm from. And if you, go, if you care enough to go online and, and look it up, you'll know where I'm from. But I don't want I, I won't do anything along those lines because I don't want people really a I don't want to be perceived as having a bias. But b in the grand scheme of things, I don't think anybody really cares who I'm rooting for. Yeah, yeah, 
Yep. So, all right. Uh, let's get into. I, I got a couple of stories here. I think are gonna be fun oh, for wait. us. To, oh, what's up? I, I um. So while I was away, I did a lot of writing. Oh, okay. Um, the and I, uh, I, I made a short list of things that I learned while I was away. Okay. Um. Uh, and I think the first one is most important and probably the only serious one. Uh, quiet moments are few and far between for me, and that's something I need to work on. Okay. Like I said before, as soon as I get home, it's just noise. Number two, I uh, I think love reading. Uh, number three, <laughs> social media is I use it as a luxury instead of a tool. Naps. Oh man, you guys have you guys heard about this nap business? <laughs> I have heard about the nap business. I'm a huge, oh, man. I'm a huge uh, supporter of the nap business. Uh huh. Yeah, we need to start a company or something. Um, I learned that I will randomly burst into song while driving, and I will make raptor noises when faced with another bored person. Huh. Uh, when faced with a return to technology, I was equal parts excited and very anxious. Um, the things that annoyed me before still annoy me. I almost killed an exceptionally slow driver that I could not get around. Um, and uh, I can stare at nature for hours, and horses will stare back. I also learned, this isn't on the list, horses have giant dongs. <laughs> They're just huge. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't, okay, There's to be a, fair, uh, I, didn't know how, I didn't know how big horses were in general. But, oh man, like that's not even to scale. There's a, there's a whole section of the internet where you can find out how big a horse really is. Ooh. Yeah, that doesn't sound appealing there. at all. No, no, don't go there. <laughs> But it's there. I, I, heard, I know you took some time off, but have you ever heard the phrase hung like a horse? I mean, come on. <laughs> I thought that was to scale. This wasn't even to scale for man <laughs> nor beast. <laughs> so those are the things. I'm sorry. Those are the things that I've learned. Have you ever been to a way. Tijuana horse show? I mean, come on. <laughs> I know. Uh, I think that's wrestle fans area. Uh, uh, my favorite part in. It, uh, let me just be honest. Uh, you not being on social media seriously dampered my social media experience. First off, <laughs> let me let me let me state that. Um, however, I did have fun while you were gone because, I, like I told you uh, when you were on the show, I I had uh, something completely ridiculous to tweet to you every single day. And I was not the only one. And it wasn't, it wasn't like just completely ridiculous stuff. It was completely ridiculous time sensitive things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh, one of the last tweets I sent, I'm like, listen, you need to respond. There's a guy, he has a fully functional TARDIS and it's ours. If you respond in 10 minutes, knowing fully well that he's not going to respond because he doesn't have his phone on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I was enjoying every time I saw a tweet come from Trotsky adding you. It's like, oh, he's not getting that until next week. That's gonna be, <laughs> I can't wait till he checks his speed. <laughs> well, I had one. I had one uh, drafted in my head, um, asking what the results of combining a lemon party and a blue waffle was. Oh my god! And then I decided oh, no. to just leave it alone because I didn't want to know what your response would be. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after he's had all weekend to 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 pontificate things, um, percolate, percolate these these thoughts to get out. So awesome! Like awesome. that was the, the the scale of where I was going with these <laughs> ridiculous tweets. So what do you think, Josh? Do, 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 are you going to do a, absolutely a, no, 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 no way no. in I hell? Can't, I can barely even get you to leave the city. I know. There's a reason for that. Yeah. I, I spent 18 years. In a low tech area. Yeah. I don't need to go back. I ain't going back. <laughs> I know what's <laughs> there. I've been there. I don't like it. So, and like I said, my experiment's going to come up this weekend. I'm not going to so much shut off technology. And I did a little bit this weekend when we were up in New York. I tried to 
turn off Twitter a little bit, only check in so often. Biggest thing I did was like read comics. But uh, but I am we're doing kind of the couples uh, retreat kind of thing, and I'm going to try to like we only use the phone to get around basically, right? Uh, and, and turn it off otherwise. But you know we're staying in a hotel and stuff, so it's not like we're going to be away from technology. Uh, what about you, Jim? You looking at? Uh, do you think you're a little uh, high teched out? Yeah, I, I think so, and I think a lot of people would, would agree with me. I mean, I will say that I think I've gotten better in terms of not, you know, picking up the phone when, when I'm having, you know, one-on-one conversations and that sort of thing. I mean, I carry around. I mean, I, I think at one point, you know, when I had I – have, I have my work phone. I have my personal cell phone. And, you know, when, when you sit there and you realize uh, subconsciously you're standing there with two phones looking at two different things at the same time, uh, you know, you might want to taper back a little bit. So, um <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, I, I think for me, it's, you know, obviously it's a crucial part of the job. Um, you know, it, there's always that need to, to be constantly in touch. I mean, you know, the week of the week of when everything happened up here, I mean, you know, it wasn't uncommon to have the phone ring at one in the morning to say, hey, you know, we need you in here in an hour or something like that. Yeah. So um, I, 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 it's some, I, I'll tell you what the, what the, the real test is going to be for me is in July. Uh, I'm going to Jamaica for a wedding, oh, and wow. this is actually my first time outside of the of of North America. Um, so, and, and I'm I, I made the mistake in 2007. I went to Toronto, and I had a uh, Windows smartphone that I took with me, and I knew it was roaming, and I still used it. And I came back with a $390 roaming roaming bill. Oh. So, mm. so, so my goal is not to repeat that. Uh, when, when I uh, when I when I go to uh, when I go to Jamaica, so I mean that's going to be a test, but I'm I'm going to try. I think I'm going to try to uh, I'm going to try to enjoy it and try to enjoy leaving the phone and 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 you know I'll take an actual camera with me and maybe not so much my my, my phone. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, and I think I mean I don't know. That's where I kind of get detached because I'm like I can't just bring a camera instead of my phone that is a perfectly good camera. Yeah. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Like it's like I'm used to using this. I can just put it on airplane mode, right? And then realize how much stuff doesn't work on that thing when you put it in airplane yeah. mode, um, which I did a little bit. You of that. also you also realize how much stuff does work on airplane mode. That too, that too, because it could be perfectly functional. You know, uh, you know, as long as you're like, did I preload all those podcasts? Did I preload all those books I wanted to read, and then you're just fine. You know, you just plug it in. You know, whenever you get a chance, and 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 we're good to go for the weekend, right? Um, but the biggest thing for me is that nervous tick. And, and I think, you know, you, you mentioned about the, 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 like, you know, you can get a call anytime. Like, I keep checking my email over a weekend where I told myself I'm not going to respond to any business mail, just making sure nothing was on fire. You know what I mean? Like, that, that well, feeling. Like, like, just keeping that, that ear out for, for something. And then I did get one thing. And I was like, I will not respond to this until I get back Tuesday. And I think there was a study done a number of years ago where I think so, and and I'm sorry I keep moving moving side to side here because I because I'm 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 playing with a lighting and it's not exactly the most optimal in here <laughs> with the iPad, but um, there was a study done a number of years ago and I wish I could pull it up on the fly that that suggested that there is some sort of subconscious twinge that that we get when we get a text message or when we get a phone call and I will say I mean there's quite often you know if I'm taking a nap. Uh, because I, I am a I am a firm believer in the nap business, uh, and I wake up at some point and I roll over and I pick up the phone. It's just as I'm getting a call, or just as I missed a call, or just as I got a text. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think our brains are programmed that way. Sadly, mm-hmm. uh, there was a really good discussion on uh, this week in tech this week that uh, they got into a little bit of the. You know what we're exposing our kids to, and how much technology we're exposing ourselves to, and the adaptive brain and everything like that. So I think we do, we are training definitely our brain. And, and again, I think it, it depends on what you use your your technology for. You know, I, you know, you and I, we're, we're responding to it because our business. You know, versus you know, uh, you know, maybe maybe Chachi more. Uh, he responds to like the Twitters and everything. I know you have like everything coming to your phone, right, Chach? Mm-hmm. So you have that consistent kind of feedback loop going, and that's why you're so kind of deep in with Twitter. Um, it's it, my brand. And it, it's, it's your brand, and it's your it, it's your social life too, to a point. Is does that seem accurate? I don't know if I'd take it that far. <laughs> well, it seems it, it seems that as much as you're you're, you're on there. I have an active social life. Well, yes. I'm not saying that it's replaced your social life. I'm just saying that it's kind of an in addition to uh, sort of situation. So. I have a party in my pocket at all times. They, exactly. 
Exactly. <laughs> and it, but it's an extension. And, I, and I think that's, that's the cool thing, you know, why I got into social media, because it is an extension of, you know, because, you know, you don't have to, you know, go out to connect with people, I guess you could say. Right. I mean, you know, how many, how many of our friends we met through social media? You know, and then yeah. we met them. All of them. Oh, just about, right? Yeah, yeah, almost all of them. Yeah. Um, so, and I think it's interesting. The last, yeah. The last thing I, w- I want to say about it is I think it, for me personally, it was really great. It let me get some good perspective and come back to the world fresh. It is not a way of life that I would want to lead. It's like shortly before I went on this vacation, I decided to eat vegetarian for a week. I said, I'm going to take this week, and I'm going to see if I can do it without eating meat. It was fine. It was no, all fine. right. I, I, I felt okay after not eating the meat. And then come Saturday, I ate more meat than I probably should. I, I ate a lot of meat. <laughs> <laughs> and it was delicious. Vegetarianism is fine. It's fine. It's good in small doses, but not. It's, for me, it's not a way of life. Technology-free is not a way of life for me. But every now and then, it's okay. And that's the thing. Every time I go to like you know visit the folks and everything, and realize how much these people are not are not connected with technology. You know, if they're not yeah. talking, with, they don't have the chance to talk with somebody online. They don't have any social life otherwise. If that doesn't happen, you know what I mean. Or and that's probably I said that backwards. But um, and and then they're usually ones that they're. You know, have you ever been in a small town? And at a grocery store and come across somebody talking about something that's happening on Facebook. Has this happened to anybody else? I, this happened to me, I think, twice over the weekend. And, and just you can't help but eavesdrop at that point. Usually in a Walmart. Um, and, and, and just like kind of seeing that response, you know. Um, just uh, it, it's different than, than a lot of people I think we deal with. So, um, Okay, uh, I, I definitely want to uh, touch on one of these here, at least before we get out of here. It's a great conversation. And, and if anybody else is out there experimenting uh, with the getting away from technology, if you're listening to the show, you're probably into it a lot. Uh, and your thoughts on it, please you know, drop us a line on Twitter, on Facebook, and everything like that. So to somebody who's using technology to its uh, uh, fullest, uh, uh, well, breaking of terms of service, um, this, this story came up. I, I found this yesterday, and actually uh, uh, I talked to AJ last night. Um, because this sounded like it was right up his alley. So uh, this story came out on Ars Technica that a Fios customer discovers the limits of, quote, unlimited data when he got a, a, a phone call when he started doing about 77 terabytes a month. Jeez. How the... <laughs> oh, okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get into what exactly he did. So this guy, um, he... He was doing no. Admittedly, what he was doing is technically against the terms of service. Because for a regular customer, you and me, like Chachi, we can't like start a server, right? right. We can't like host our website off of here right. or, or host services off of here. You know, I mean, as it is, you know, we're we're kind of broadcasting from here. That's still within. Or we're using Justin TV and whatever. That should be fine, right? Uh, and there's no way we're doing 77 terabytes. I'm curious what we do push out of here up and down. Considering all all the you know video work we do, out it, here. the thing is, it's not constant. No, no. We record it once and we put it up for this, and then I'm pushing big video files and I'm backing stuff up, and you know, it's always pretty consistent stream there. But yeah, still, but that is within the terms of exactly. Terms I'm of using service. other services. I'm not. I'm not running a server from here. Uh, here, if I can pull this up here. Here's a here's a look at what he was he was doing. Uh, he, he was he was running uh, basically a lab. Um, he, he had a server, uh, and v, a VP, VPN server, uh, testing server with two 1.5 terabyte disks, a TU server, a 4U Solaris ZFS backup machine. Not everybody's going to know what this is. I know. And I know AJ says he has a lot of this stuff. Uh, another 4U server, uh, which was a main server with 24 2 terabyte disks and two 3U storage expansion units, each with 15 ter- 15 3 terabyte disks, a 2U Windows miscellaneous server with a 1 terabyte disk, 2 TU uninterruptible power supplies, another 4U ZFS server for backups with 24 1 terabyte disks. He had um, several, let's see if I can find the number here, he had several people uh, VPNing into this on a regular basis. 
Uh, he was running a total of seven servers with 209 terab terabytes of raw storage in his house. Now, I was talking to uh, AJ last night, and, and he said, he said that, like, yeah, you know, he was trying to save some bucks by not being on the business account here, uh, but the power bill is what's going to get you first <laughs> with this much stuff running in your house. Um, he's saving a few bucks. He was uh, he switched from the dual 150 megabyte business class connection to a 300 megabyte downstream, 65 megabyte upstream residential plan in January. Uh, and, and recently, he got uh, a call from Verizon asking pretty much exactly what are you doing, and no, we're going to have to switch you to a different account. Uh, so, so there you go. Uh, definitely a, a, a bit beyond the, what is it, 200 gigabytes, I think Comcast was doing for a limit. Uh, but that's somebody using his Fios to a fullest potential right there. So, um, I, I don't know. What do you think, Josh? What do you think of this experiment? <coughs> Are you like pushing anywhere near this? <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> I don't think Comcast would even support that no. much. And plus, I, I don't think there's a, a power circuit in my house that could handle that. You have an order house, as, yeah. as do I. I. I worry about my setup every day. Uh, no, I would have to tap in directly to the power line to get... <laughs> we gotta, we're going to have to call, call Duquesne, run a new line from the pole, uh, and everything. So that, what, That's just dumb. <laughs> I, I mean, he had to have been charging a decent amount of money. If he's pushing out 77 terabytes worth of information. It, it, was, a, it was a lab. I mean, it was just experimentation or something. I know AJ does something like that. Uh, had, no, no. No? No? You don't, they you don't, had you don't just been... You don't just do this on a whim, Chachi? No. I mean, it's a hell of a lot of te technology. That's good. How, how, much, how, much, how much worth of servers do you think he had in there? I don't know. That's crazy. It, it, definitely a couple grand, easily. Yeah. 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 Um, at, at the rack alone looked like it was a five hundred dollar rack. Mm -hmm. so, nice rack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, we use that joke all the time. When uh, I'm sorry, no, no, no. When when we get new racks at work, especially at the library where it was completely casual, and we were uh, redoing uh, library network systems all the time, uh, it, we would get a new rack delivered to the main office. And usually, the second person into in the office would drop that line because it, we never had them put it anywhere out of the way because we were moving it that quickly. So the first thing you would see when you walked in the office was the giant rack. <laughs> I love that you can't say that any other way. Um, it's like the big gas savings for Kmart, right? <laughs> Um, so I, I have a couple uh, real quick ones here uh, for Xbox. Some interesting technology things are going. Of course, we talked about last week a bit. The Xbox One, it's going to have a Connect. It's going to be able to see like how many people were in the room, down to like apparently it's going to take your pulse, which is just blows my mind. Uh, just from a camera, uh, there was a patent in 2011, and this could uh, uh, potentially apply to uh, this new Connect system uh, that Microsoft did, uh, where they're going to be able to, and I've been hearing rumblings of this too, this idea that like, if you, if you have a movie, uh, are they going to, are they like, say if it's like a, a newer release movie or something like that, like, like a theater, theatrical release movie, are, are, are they going to start doing, uh, uh, okay, we see too many people in the room to be watching this movie for this license is one of the ideas for this. It's going to be, uh, the idea of, um, Microsoft may award achievements, for uh, watching TV and ads by monitoring you with Connect. Hmm. So? So? It, listen, we go over this at least once a month. So that privacy idea? If you want privacy... Don't buy the system with the camera. That's mandatory. <laughs> throw it away. All right? If you, if you expect privacy in this day and age, mm -hmm. throw your cell phone in a trash can. If you have a MacBook, you could toss that in a trash can. Um, anything with a camera or GPS, just get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Stop watching TV because they're tracking what you're watching through your cable box. I, I, I mean, they know what you're DVRing because it's on their system. Mm -hmm. 
And so, I mean, there's no such thing as privacy there's anymore. There's some cool ideas with this too. Is is sometimes they like there's some there's these ideas popping out from this that like when they show a commercial, now they're going to be able to tell if you're actually looking at the commercial. Good. Maybe they'll make better <laughs> commercials. That would be excellent. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> so so you. And what do you think, Jim? You're you're in you're in the uh, old school TV business. What do you think of this idea of <laughs> tracking, even more tracking for for advertising for for television, maybe? Well, you know, I think you know, clearly, you know, everybody's looking for that for that way to 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 solidify the revenue stream, and yeah, everybody's going out there and doing everything they can. I think that um, you know we're going to see more of that. We are going to see uh, companies try to take advantage of technology, and and you know, Chachi brought up a very good point. I mean, look, you know. If, if we're going to bring this equipment into our home, if we're going to buy, you know, an Xbox One, if, uh, you know, it's, it's it, I, I personally think it comes with the territory. And I think there's ways to, you know, you're going to see all these these companies, you know, they may have grand plans and you're going to see them kind of taper off and do what they can to allay those fears once they come to the market. But, uh, you know, it, it's it, it's the reality in which we live in. I mean, it's all about the, the mighty buck. And if that's going to be a way that a company could say, hey, we can we know we're going to get a dedicated revenue stream if we're monitoring, you know, if we're monitoring people watching these commercials, then, you know, they're going to do it. And unfortunately, that's something that, you know, like it or not, you have to accept. If not, you know, disconnect and, you know, be like Will forever. I don't recommend it. Nope. No. <laughs> well, it's it, you have you have two choices. You can accept the fact that there's no such thing as complete privacy anymore. Not around this tech now, unless you're a mountain man. Or you can go live in a cave. Yep. Because even if you have a debit card, your purchases right. are being tracked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and by, you want them. The even that, you want them to be tracked, so you can log into your bank account and say, "Oh, this is where all my money went." Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, you you went out and you picked an organization to do exactly what you're what you obviously don't want to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I I mean, you go out, you picked a bank. A bank watches your your money, your spending habits. It, keep, that's an invasion of privacy. Keep, keep your cat, and then people think they're so much safer when they're using checks and inconvenience everybody in the line. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, another interesting thing Xbox One uh, 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 came out over the last week was uh, uh, apparently that you're going to be able to remote play over Skype. Like you're playing a game, somebody Skype calls you. We saw that demo. You can just pull in that Skype call from the corner and talk with somebody. But apparently, they can take over your game remotely. With a given permission, uh, it's. Uh, th I'm Th sorry. That's kind of cool. Is there no? Well, I mean, it's the same thing that uh, that Sony announced um, in their very very vague the, the Gaikai thing. Yeah. Okay. In their very very vague presentation, mm -hmm. um, and it's something that made me realize today that the only reason Microsoft is releasing a new system right now is to mess with Sony. Yeah, but well, they have to because their thing will look old, and and they need something to integrate that new technology. Right. I, you know, I mean, granted, granted, you know, this is the other discussion is no, like, they, they don't, hey, they, hey, they need to release something that's going to last ten years. I disagree. But look at how much this current one has been upgradable. It's a completely different system than when it started, software wise, for sure. What do you disagree with? Uh, yeah. that they have the, to oh, release sorry. a new system. Okay. They don't have to. They have five years. They already announced it. What's that, Will? Uh, I was just going to say um, I, that I, I I agree that they're um, they're really they're, they're each other's main competitors. Nintendo isn't on their radar anymore, and part of that is because Nintendo doesn't care about the cycle anymore. Yeah. They're like, okay, well, you guys are going to put it out then. Whatever. We're going to be over here completely doing our own thing that is so different from the consoles and games that you're releasing. They did mm -hmm. it with the Wii, and they... I think they're try the reason they put it out the Wii U out so early is they're trying to replicate that success. They won't. They didn't. They haven't. They won't. They're trying. Yeah, they're they're trying, and it, and the problem is they put it out so early, and now we we're seeing these things like like the Wii U came side by side with the PlayStation Three. A year after the Xbox, it was the lowest hardware next to the highest, you know, hardware. Uh, now they came out first, and now that makes them look even older. Even if they had the lower end hardware of the three, and they came out maybe beside these guys, 
they would look a little better than they do. And they're just not providing any experience. I mean, regardless of hardware, there's no games on this thing. I, we got, um, Chachi, I don't know if you checked this out, but there was a card for a subscription for a, uh, a uh, Nintendo magazine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I forgot to... It uh, is so sad. Is it, is it, it is bad? So, it's, it's rough. Uh, like, it's some of the worst writing I've... Like, as far, as far as stuff goes. It's obviously trying to replace that fanboyism Nintendo power mm -hmm. when, when that went away. Uh, but it's not doing a good job of it. There's nothing compelling about it, you know? So it, 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 if hurry. this is your only source for video games and all you have is a Nintendo... But I don't think anybody lives in that world anymore. No. Really? Like, no, like, no, no, no. They do. They do. They people do live in that world, but we don't. People who are ten years younger than us live in that world. Ten True. years and plus, little True. kids still live in that world. And, and I think the people they, living in that world is is shrinking exponentially, and that's where Nintendo's losing it. So well, I think it, that's true. It, it, Nintendo is reaching out to the 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 cutesy uh, the cutesy little audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, however, yeah. That number keeps getting bigger uh, w with population constantly growing, but uh, with the maturity level getting younger and younger, uh, that QT market is is narrowing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, well, I think the, I think your top end's growing at that end. I mean, we're all getting our Call of Duty games, right? Well, no, it's not even that. I mean, uh, the QT market works on two levels. Mm -hmm. You have the uh, uh, the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no, that, that's that's an overstatement. It's not necessarily the elderly, but I mean, you have the uh, that was a new market that they got into with the Wii, right? Which is but it continues, awesome of them. It continues with the Wii U mm -hmm. because you have the grandmas that want to play their Mario, mm -hmm. and you can't tell me it doesn't exist because my grandma wants to play Mario. Okay, <laughs> so uh, you you have that, and you got all those Wii's and then you have, sitting in all those nursing homes, and then you have like the the, the seven and younger crowd. Mm -hmm. And even that end of the spectrum is shrinking mm -hmm. because parents totally. nowadays are terrible and will let their children play anything. Yeah. So yeah. the maturity level is lowering, which is making Nintendo's market shrink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. On top of that, like Xbox and PS3, they are doing well because they're appealing to the the core gamer market, the people who made gaming and video games super popular originally um, are now older mm -hmm. and we have money. Like we were the ones who made video gaming culturally relevant and now we have the money and now they're making their systems to appeal to us. Exactly. Whereas and, and, and Nintendo even is still trying to appeal to the children that made them popular in the first place. And, and even broadening with these ideas like, like you know, all the video we're seeing on Xbox and PlayStation these days. I mean, they're making, you know, the, the stat of how many people are just what using it as a media player and not even playing video games on there, you know. Uh, it, it's really kind of brought it out. Any play that Nintendo does looks laughable in comparison. So <laughs> now we have the money. <laughs> now we, <laughs> yeah, you, you got we, we got we got big boy jobs now. Now we have, the money. and we still play video games. Yes. So that's like the perfect uh, situation, you know. Well, it, it's evolution. Uh, Microsoft and Sony evolved. Mm -hmm. They stayed with us. Yeah, Nintendo. Did not Nintendo Nintendo thinks that we're still twelve, right? So, all right. On that point, I think it's time to wrap up. First of all, Jim Loke from Boston, yes, thank sir. you for joining us via your iPad. I think it's held up pretty well. I'm very impressed by it, actually. I uh, and, and uh, yeah, I had the spinny the, the, the never-ending spinner on my MacBook, and I was able to over the last hour uh, remedy the situation. So, <laughs> excellent. Um, yes, but no, thank you, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to see you, gentlemen, and I hope to see you in person. Uh, a, on a baseball field very soon. Oh, I hope so. When are you coming up? Uh, we're working on that. Um, unfortunately, I had a co-anchor leave, so I'm sort of the last man standing right now, so I can't get many weekends off. Mm -hmm. But um, we're, you know, we're working on that. So I'm, I'm going to get back at least once. Excellent. If people want to check out what you're doing in your uh, in your own big boy job, where can they find you? <laughs> you can find me at Loke. Uh, you can find me. You can find the the if you want to if you want to see a guy who's going to root for the Penguins openly and heartily. At Loke. If you want to find somebody who's going to tell you the news from Boston from a straightforward perspective with no homerism, at Loke WCBB. <laughs> hey, good luck with that, Jim. Hey, I'm trying, man. <laughs> and also, 
Uh, he'll be on the Wrestling Mayhem show here later in this evening. Uh, but you can also find him at ThoughtfulRiot.com, at DJ Lunchbox on the Twitters, and uh, mm-hmm. as he reintegrates himself with the population. That's true. Like, like you just said, Sorg, check me out at ThoughtfulRiot.com. Also look for me at DJ Lunchbox on Twitter. Also file, follow Thoughtful Riot on Twitter. Uh, and there is going to be just a whole bunch of stuff coming down the pipeline. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm back. I'm energized. I have, I have plans. I wrote out plans for media to produce follow me on youtube i'm at i am the dj launchbox on youtube follow me there there's going to be great stuff coming uh on every single outlet that i can find excellent excellent um and every time i see your 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 thing pop up with this with this icon i think i picture you as bill cosby with whatever you say <laughs> i just want to let you know that like every time you you'd like you know text me like on 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 the on the G chat or and everything like that, I see the Bill Cosby picture, and I'm like, and that is where the voice comes from in my head. Well, that makes me happy because I know that one goal has been achieved. Yes, Chachi, he's over <laughs> at InsertCoinToBegin.com. He's at Chachi Says. Whoa. Yeah. What? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> uh, that's the sound I'm gonna make when I take the hard drive out to beat it with a hammer. Oh. I got two of the top screws out, which will give me access to the plates. Okay. Um, however, the other five aren't budging. Are you, ta- are you taking that home with you? Do you have the tools? No, I'm going to go grab a blunt object from your tool room. Oh. And go outside while you're setting up the next show. I have an axe somewhere. You want to try that? Yeah. I Actually, there's like a pick <laughs> back there, too. Nice. I... I- just so many goodies down here. And I'm over at uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitters, uh, MikeSorg.com. Um, and uh, someday I'll blog again over at Sorgatron.com. Um, I, I, you know, I've been on Google Plus a lot lately, and I, we, not to get into that. But uh, I, I've been really enjoying the, uh, the new interface over there. And kind of lose myself in it like I do on Pinterest. So, uh, so I, I, and I've been kind of asking questions and having some fun over there. So uh, go follow, <laughs> go look me up over on Google Plus and all that kind of stuff. What's up? Uh, the Root Sports Pittsburgh account. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pocket tweeted like twelve times within the past. <laughs> oh, Tash! <laughs> That's awesome. Um, up right now. What's that? I, I think they deleted them, but uh, you can go. Uh, Mikey just tweeted a screenshot of it. Fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Who's ev- ass tweeting? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks to our awesome chat room. They've been popping all night. I know somebody wants me to help them with their Tetris game after that Xbox story, and uh, and and Jim Loke, you're Bobby's hero. <laughs> So, uh, with that, guys, thanks to the awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>